Hello everyone, welcome back to another brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing another tier list, not based on Riz, however. I'm going to be doing a tier list rating every anime arc I've seen so far on my journey. I started watching anime last year, uh, now I can't stop. So, I got five animes here, Attack on Titan, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, and Death Note, and I'm going to be rating each arc in them. So, Attack on Titan, JJK, Chainsaw Man, they, their arcs are pretty established, whereas Full Metal and Death Note are not. So, for Full Metal, I used this article to sort the arcs. Uh, I will link that down in the description if you're interested. And for Death Note, I there was this YouTuber I watched, Cool Nugget. Uh, I watched his review of Death Note. It was really fun, it was really good, and he sorted the the anime into arcs and I actually really liked uh, the way he sorted it so I will be using him as my source for the Death Note arcs. I will be telling you which episodes are in each arc before I rate them and uh, before we hop right in of course you see the tier list uh, there's no really like like I'm not telling you what's the tiers it's purple to red. Uh, I'll explain this really quickly for you the color rating system. Purple is just my favorite shit it's legendary it's peak fiction I love it. Blue, I love it. It's also, it's just not quite my favorite yet. It's still really good television, though. Cyan, I liked it. I really enjoyed myself. It's really fun, but, you know, there, there, there's problems. Green is good. You're completely average baseline content. It's good. You liked it. It's not stellar, though. Yellow is okay. It's mid. It's fine. There's weak moments. There's also good moments, though. Orange is just your straight-up bad, and then red is your straight-up hot garbage. Uh, I will be doing spoilers for every anime in here, but if you've seen one anime and not the other, there's timestamps you can skip if you want to see my thoughts on one certain anime, and no manga spoilers for JJK and Chainsaw Man, which are both ongoing. Kicking things off with Attack on Titan, we got The Fall of Shiganshina, which is just the first two episodes of AOT, and I, I think this is a blue arc. This is, this is definitely one of the best... Uh, even though it's a two-episode arc, like, this arc is pretty fucking good. Uh, like, it sets up exactly what you need to know. You meet everyone, you learn about the walls, you see the walls get raided, uh, you see the armor titan for the first time, you see the colossal titan for the first time. There's so much that goes on in these first two episodes, and then, of course, it ends with you seeing Eren, uh, Armin, and Mikasa uh, join the cadets. So, this arc really has a lot. It's not, like, quite perfect... It's not your purple, it's not your goaded material, but it's pretty damn close. Then you got Humanity's Comeback arc, which is episodes 3 and 4 of AOT. The, the, the training arc, the cadet core arc, it's fine. It's good. I mean, green is good. Uh, don't get me wrong. Like, I will watch Humanity's Comeback any day of the week. It's a completely fine arc. It is AOT's worst arc, though. Like, uh, the training arc episodes are completely just fine average episodes. Uh... Not a lot going on here. You meet, uh, like, Reiner, Annie, Baratil. You meet important characters, but these episodes are, like, weirdly paced. You got some weird tone shifts in them. Like, you have the Sasha being a wild animal thing, which is weird. And the night of the closing ceremony, you just kind of meet the characters and we move on to Trost. So, Humanity's Comeback, it's, it is one of those arcs where it is only two episodes, but it feels only two episodes. Like, Fall of Shiganshina has a lot packed in, and Humanity's Comeback really doesn't. You just meet a lot of the characters, and that's really its purpose. Then you got Struggle for Trost, uh, which is episodes 5 through 13 of AOT. I think, I think Trost is a cyan. I like Trost, but I'm not crazy about it. I think I'm lower on Trost than most people, even though, like, AOT is my, like, favorite show of all time, but... Trost is good, but the thing about Trost is it has really high highs and really low lows. Like, Trost starts with First Battle and The World the Girl Saw, which are both really good episodes, and then it just keeps falling off, falling off, falling off, falling off, until uh, Primal Desire, which is a really good wrap-up to Trost, but the middle sections, like the Armin, Kits, Warman stuff is just fucking boring you have Aaron, uh, like the the pixis stuff where they're talking to pixis and that's a whole episode worth of stuff like these episodes are fine to watch but like if if idle response like were just like cut or shortened into one whole episode this arc is so much better then you got the female of titan arc you got episodes 14 through 25 so uh in, including including the uh eve of the counterattack stuff even then like female titan is so good uh, I'll rate these in the tiers uh, at the end of the video, but Female Titan is so good. Yeah, I love the Female Titan arc. 
uh, one of my favorite arcs of AOT for sure. Uh, like the the ending, like the final battle with Annie is great. The freaking first battle with Annie, like the whole beginning of it, where you're just where you see the free female Titan for the first time, that's terrifying. And then you kind of are trying to learn Irwin's plan. You get Bite, which I think is an underrated episode. I love that episode, even though a lot of people have it pretty lowly rated. Uh, er, the Irwin Smith uh, episode titled Irwin Smith, you learn Irwin's plan, you get Annie trapped, and then you have Crushing Blow right after that, which is freaking amazing. And uh, Le Annie wrecks Levi's squad. You get Annie versus Aaron. The Emo Titan is just filled to the brim with stuff. And then when you get to uh, to Walcina and you get the shit with Annie, like the standoff, the trap standoff, I love the trap standoff with Annie. It's one of my favorite moments of the entire show. I think it's brilliant. But like having the Eva the counterattack stuff here kind of lowers it a bit down. And I'm also like, Mercy is a fine episode and Wall is a bit underwhelming as a finale for me. I think it kind of peaks its smile, but like, I still love the female Titan arc, and I still think Wall's a good, like a great episode. It's a blue, but like female Titan arc, it's really good. I, there's minor complaints, which just make it not a purple. Then you have Clash of the Titans arc, which I think is a purple. It's one of my, I, I love season two. Uh, yeah, uh, this is episodes 26 through 37. Clash of the Titans arc just covers season two. I love this arc. Uh, Ymir is my favorite character in the entire show. Uh, she really shines this arc. You get the Sasha episode, I'm Home, one of my favorite episodes of the entire show. You get Warrior, one of the best episodes in the entire show. I just love the focus early on on the side characters. You get to know so much more about Reiner, Bertolt, Connie, Sasha, Historia, Ymir. And then you catch back up with the main characters uh, midway through. You get your Aaron, Mikasa, and Armin stuff. And then you have the uh, Emir backstory stuff, uh, and then it ends with uh, Reiner and Bertolt. Uh, Emir has to go back and save them, and you get the uh, the smiling Titan coming back, killing Hannes. They, this arc is fucking packed with stuff. I love this arc. It's one of my favorites. Uh, it has like four purple episodes in it. It's amazing. I love the Clash of the Titans arc. Uprising is Cyan. The thing about the Uprising is it's one of those arcs that's pretty, like, it's not like Trost, where Trost has, like, as high as a purple and as low as a green. Uprising just has pretty consistent cyans and blues throughout. Uprising is, uh, like, uh, I feel like people agree with me, this is one of the weaker arcs of AOT. It's it's just a setup arc for, for RTS, but, you know, it, it does its job well. You meet Kenny. There's a lot of good Levi content, amazing Historia content. Historia shines here more than she does in any other arc, and I love that. But it it, it, it is slow at times. Uh, like, the first couple of episodes are really setup-ish. Uh, then you get the, uh, obviously, the Historia Aaron stuff with Rod Rice. That stuff's really good. And then it kind of slows down a little bit. Again, you get Historia killing her father, bystander, and friends are really good episodes and then it kind of uh like the last episode of the arc is like completely fine and you're just setting up for rts but uprising it does its job well you i love the royal government side of it i love Historia's arc in this arc but uh it is definitely on the lower side of aot arcs but it's still freaking great and then you got rts which is uh like commonly known as one of the best arcs in just anime like return to shiganshina is amazing Covering episodes 50 through 50, uh, 59, I think. Can't really see. Return to Shiganshina has everything. It caps off uh, so much. They beat Reiner. They beat Bertolt. They beat Zeke, uh, even though Zeke escapes. Uh, you, they open the basement. They learn They learn about the outside world. Uh, they lose Erwin in the process. You get Armin's sacrifice. You get Zeke versus the Beast Titan, the Serum Bowl. Like... Return to Shiganshina is just peak fiction from start to finish. I love Descent, the like uh, Bertolt's transformation. There is so I could make a top ten list of just moments from Return to Shiganshina because it's just that good. It's one of the best arcs of all time. It's one of the best arcs in AOT for sure. Probably the best arc, debatably, debatably. But you know, Return to Shiganshina is awesome. Marley arc, another purple. I love the Marley arc more than most. I think uh, episode sixty through sixty eight. Uh, the, the, the choice to just start season four in Marley and just meeting the new characters is freaking an amazing decision. You learn about Falco, Gabba, uh, Falco, Gabby, Colt, Udo, Zofia, Peak, Porco. You, you catch back up with Zeke. You meet Magoth. Like, there's so 
much going on. You're learning so much lore about Marley. And then you have the raid on Liberio, which is the greatest four episode stretch in anime I've seen so far, probably. Like, it's four straight purples, Declaration of War through Assassin's Bullet. It's fucking incredible television. The Raid on Liberio, I could sit down and watch that every day for the rest of my life and be satisfied. It is so good. And yeah, uh, like everyone is, everyone gets something to do in this arc. Like Sasha's death, Connie does shit, John does shit, Gabby's obviously a huge part of it. Like every single person does something. There's so much lore. There's great fights. It has everything. The Marley arc is perfect. And then you have the War for Parody arc, which is another purple. I know I'm glazing at this point, but I mean, come on. The War for Parody arc is amazing. Uh, Like the ending of AOT, I know there's haters out there, but, you know, it's incredible. It's one of my favorite endings of all time. Uh, The last two episodes of AOT are freaking perfect as far as I'm concerned. And then you got like the main uh, little meat and potatoes episodes in here. You got your your two brothers, your memories of the future. You're from you 2,000 years ago, which are some of the greatest AOT episodes in general. Uh, There's like... There are weak points in War for Parody. You got your prides, which are just like completely mid episodes, and but like there's so much good that it overpowers the mid. So it's not like Struggle for Trost where it, like it kind of balances out. War for Parody has too much good to like outweigh the one or two mid episodes in here. War for Parody is amazing. It wraps up the story perfectly. Now we're moving on to Full Metal Alchemist though. You got the Forbidden Alchemy arc, which is episodes one through 12. And I think this is one of Full Metal Alchemist's stronger arcs. I'm gonna put it in Cyan. Maybe I'll move it up to blue if I'm feeling uh, feeling nice. But I actually really like the early days of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Uh, like introducing, uh, that you have the city of hearsay stuff. You have obviously the intro to Ed and Al and doing their transmutation. Uh, I also love, uh, the, like the picture you see right there, the Shao Tucker stuff, uh, who doesn't love, well, I mean, I guess you don't love the Shao Tucker stuff, but it's really good. Uh, I love the stuff with the Zumi, uh, early on is really good too. You also have Maze's death in this arc, which is really good, but like you, it's like, it falls into the same category as Trost for me, where it has like four or five really good episodes, but then the rest of it is kind of just there, kind of just average. Uh, the Lurking Homunculi arc, episodes 13 through 20, I would also put in Cyan. I really like the end of it. Like episodes 17 through 20 are really good. Death of the Undying is probably the best episode in the entire series. Mustang versus Lust is fucking awesome. But like 13 through 14 is the greed stuff, obviously. And 15, 16 is just like shit happening. Like, I don't know. I like this arc. I'm just not, I'm not the biggest Full Metal Alchemist guy in the world. Like, I think it's a good show, obviously, but I'm not, I haven't, I don't think it's the greatest anime of all time, like some people say. Sins of the Father is a weak arc for me. I would put it in green. Uh, I really like like episodes 25, 26, 28. But then you got like interlude party in there, which is like, I mean, I guess it, it really doesn't even count, but Sins of the Father's fine. It has a lot of slow episodes. You build up to the, uh, the, the first like encounter with father and Edward, uh, and Envy are like stuck inside gluttony. There's some good stuff here, but honestly, it's pretty good, solid average content. It's watchable, but I'm not like ever, ever going to be like, let's go watch the Sins of the Father arc back. Then you got the Briggs arc, episode 31 from 43. I think this is the best Full Metal Alchemist arc uh, because there's just an insane stretch in here. I think it's like 36 to 42 is just an insane stretch. You get the pride reveal, which is amazing. You get um, the father backstory, which is really good. You get ho- uh, like the pride killing the soldiers in the tunnel. A lot of the pride stuff in this arc is really good. And then you obviously meet Olivier for the first time. You meet Sloth for the first time as well. There is a lot of good stuff in the Briggs arc. This is, uh, there's also Scar Kimbley stuff, which is I like. I liked the Scar Kimbley stuff. It, it, it fell off, but like this is the peak Scar Kimbley stuff. So it Briggs has its moments. I like the Briggs arc. I would. This is probably one of the only arcs I would go back and rewatch, like the full arc. Uprisal arc, it's fine. This kind of is leading up to the the Promise Day. It's episodes forty four through fifty three. This is like the very beginning of the Promise Day, and then uh, the prelude to it. I'm not the biggest fan of the Promise Day in general, and the Uprisal arc is kind of like the worst part of it. So it kind of just falls to a grain. It's pretty average stuff. I like it. It's fine. I'm not clamoring to rewatch it ever though. And like I'm kind of shitting on it, but it's still a green. Like I I liked it. 
it was good. But it's just, it's not something I'm dying to watch again, you know? And then you have The Promised Derek, which I think is also green, which is I know is a hot take. Another one of the arcs that's like proclaimed as one of the greatest of all time. I just disagree, plain and simple. Episodes 54 through 64. I think The Promised Day arc's ending is really good. Like the last three episodes are pretty solid, but like there is some bullshit in here. Like the gold tooth doctor fight is trash. I'm sorry. It's like, I know it's not filler, but it feels like filler. Like, it feels like like we just introduced this character so Hawkeye and Mustang and Ed are occu occupied for, like, three episodes until until they get summoned by Father. It's, I, I'm not the biggest fan of The Promised Day Arc in general. I will watch it, uh, but I am, I don't want to rewatch it. I'm not, I'm not clamoring for it. I think it's good. It has, it has bad moments. It has really good moments. It, it kind of evens out to green. It's, it's a good arc. I liked it. Now we're on to Jujutsu Kaisen. We got the Cursed Child arc, which is just the JJK Zero film. It's a blue. It's amazing. I love seeing Yuta. You get, uh, you 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 learn more about Maki, Unumaki, and uh, Panda. Uh, Ghetto obviously is great. You get Gojo stuff here. He beats the shit out of Miguel. Ghetto versus uh, Yuta is awesome. I just really like JJK Zero as a film overall, and the Cursed Child arc is really fun too. I like it. It's up there. It's one of my favorite JJK arcs, probably besides the two season two arcs. Uh, it's better than anything in season one, I think, so uh, there's that. Fearsome Womb, one through eight. Cyan, uh, I like it, but this is really just the introductory phase to JJK. Uh, you meet, obviously, Yuji, Yagojo, Megumi, Nobara, but it's it's forgettable like their first four episodes aren't forgettable but i honestly can't tell you anything that happens in five through eight the gojo jogo fight is in this arc which is really good but like this is another one mixed bag i really like it though it is a great introductory to jjk the fearsome womb arc i i very much like then we got the versus mahito arc i think it's high cyan again i'm gonna rate these in tiers as well uh, this is definitely my favorite part of season one, for sure. I love Mahito. He's probably my uh, favorite character next to Nanami. Uh, and this arc contains a lot of Mahito and Nanami. Uh, you also got Yuji and Junpei stuff, which is really good. And Junpei and Mahito stuff is really good. So just, like, you have four of the best written characters in the entire show in this arc. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty damn good. So there's that. Kyoto Goodwill Event arc. It's fine. I like it. It's good. Uh, I'm not crazy about it though. I think the like Toto Yuji Hanami fights overrated. Uh, the like start of Kyoto is pretty boring when they're just fighting each other. It like, I was very excited to see everyone fight each other. And then the, it kind of was underwhelming for me. I actually really like the baseball episode. I think it brings a lot of character to the group. Like there's, there's really cool shit in this arc, but it's also kind of just like, yeah, at your average anime arc. Like, I'm not... Uh, it's another one of those arcs where I'm not clamoring to watch it. Death Painting arc is another green. Uh, this arc is a mixed bag for me because, like, the first episode is a yellow, I think, for me. Then it goes into a blue, and then it's, like, a green. So it's, like, it, it completely evens out for me to a green. Uh, it starts really slow. I was, like, not intrigued at all, especially as, like, a finale of season one arc. Then episode two is amazing. You get fucking Megumi's domain expansion, and he's just killing it. He's going off. And then the uh, the final episode, you get Yuji and Nobra versus Esso and Kechizu, which is really fun. But overall, it's only, it's a quick little three-episode arc. It does its job. Then you got Gojo's past arc, uh, or the hidden inventory premature death arc. Uh, it's a blue I love the hidden inventory. I just made a video on it. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But yeah, I love this arc. It's great. I love the uh, the storytelling they do with Ghetto and Gojo here, how they like completely swap roles. It's great. I love it. Then you got the Shibuya incident, also a blue. Uh, the Shibuya incident is amazing. What isn't there to be said about the Shibuya incident? It's been the hot topic of anime discussion in the past like three months. It's great. I think it's overrated slightly, but it's still a blue. Like, I'm still giving it a pretty high praise. You can check out my video on it for more in-depth thoughts. But yeah, I love the Shibuya incident. It has weak moments, but it also has some of the strongest moments of the entire series. So uh, it evens out to a blue for me. Now we're on to Chainsaw Man. Got the introduction arc. It's pretty good. It is a solid introduction. It does its job completely well. Uh, we, we're introduced to Denji. We're introduced to Makima. We see Denji join the little Devil Hunters thing. I kind of forget what it's called. I, I'm experiencing a bit of brain rot right now. But yeah, he uh, he joins like Makima's little gang. I'm pretty sure we meet Power at the end of episode two. I may be wrong about that. But yeah, uh, it's a cute introduction. 
Uh, Pochita sacrifices himself to give Denji, uh, let Denji live his dream. Denji goes ape shit. He kills everyone. We meet Makima. It's a cute little introduction. It does its job. It's really good. I like it. It's a great introduction arc. It goes into Cyan. Then we got the Bat Devil arc, which is episodes three and four, which I actually really like. It is my favorite part of season one is the Bat Devil arc. I love the stuff with power, their dynamic. It's funny because like Denji's just trying to touch her boobs the whole time, but we learn a lot about power, how she basically just tries to fuck over Denji and then she realizes that she fucked up and then Denji goes off. Uh, it's, it's a really fun arc. I don't know if it's like the best written arc here on the board, but it is so much fun. And Denji and Power stealing the show here. I mean, Denji and Power are two of the best characters in Chainsaw Man. It's super fun. And then the Bat Devil getting wrecked by Aki at the end, like just one shot by Aki's little wolf devil thing. It's awesome. Eternity Devil arc is another blue for me, actually. I love like bottle episodes. It's just like a thing of mine. That's why the Sasha episode I'm home and AOT season two is one of my favorites. I just love little, little isolated stories like this. And even though like we're still progressing the story, it feels like when they're trapped in the hotel by the eternity devil, it feels like a bottle episode. And I, I like that vibe. We meet Himeno, we meet Kobeni, uh, two of my favorite characters. I really like Kobeni. I think she's awesome. And she doesn't, she does a freaking crazy ass fight scene in one of the and in, in the next arc but eternity devil it's super fun every character's on fire you got everyone in the central place you got your six main characters for season one in one place and they're just arguing for like two episodes it's great i think it's awesome the eternity devil is uh arc is super fucking underrated i love it then we got the katana man arc which i think is a cyan it i think it's weaker than the bat devil and eternity devil arc for me personally but i still think it's awesome uh yeah, the Katana Man, fucking, like, the Yakuza or whatever, his group, they murk the shit. They, like, kill everyone. Uh, Himeno dies here. Kobeni end up, ends up having to save Denji in one of the, in one of the coolest scenes. And then the finale is awesome. Aki freaking shows up. He's killing it. Aki's probably my favorite character in the entire show. Uh, you're, there's also the Power and Denji training episode with Kishibe, which is really fun. So Katana Man has its fun moments. It's, it's, it's a little slow at times, but it's still a great arc. And now we're on to Death Note, and this is where, uh, you know, we've used four tiers. I think it's time we use uh, the rest of them, because Death Note is very divisive. We got the Cure arc, which is episodes one through two, which I gave both blues. It's a blue. Uh, great introductory to the series. A lot of the anime introductory arcs are pretty damn solid. I mean, if, if they weren't, then you wouldn't be watching the show. But yeah, the Cure arc, it's really good. You meet Light. And that's all you need. You meet L at the end of episode two, and he ends up stumping Kira as uh, when Kira kills uh, Lindell Taylor, and that kicks off the uh, the L arc, which is also a blue. It's fantastic. Episode seven of Death Note. I'm gonna make my own video on it because I think it's a fucking masterpiece. The L arc just has so much shit. This is the peak of the cat and mouse L and light stuff, and it's only in the first 10 episodes. I think it falls off pretty tremendously after this, in my personal opinion, but the this is the peak of Death Note. These first 10 episodes, this is where Death Note peaks. I know people say it peaks on later, and like the 20s, the late 20s before L's die, L dies, but I think it peaks here, and I mean, I guess, I don't know what that says about the show, but you know, that's my opinion. I think the L arc is amazing. Then you have the second Kira arc, this is green. This is fine. This is good. I still like this stuff. I like Misa getting introduced. It adds a fun new layer. However, it starts to fall off a little bit. Misa is not the greatest character in the world, but she becomes less of a good character. But here she's actually interesting, especially because she just knows who, uh, like she, she sees, uh, Elle's name and she also, uh, like figures out that Light is Kira. Uh, because uh, of her Shinigami eyes. So she adds a fun new layer to the cat and mouse game. However, it is not as good as the original like cat and mouse between just uh, Light and L. Then we got the confinement arc, and I think the confinement arc kind of sucks. This is like, it kind of blends together. It's only two episodes. It feels way longer than that. It feels like fucking three or four. It's really boring. Uh, and then this is the, the part where Light loses his memories uh, he like willingly gives up, gives up the death mode so he can lose his memories and prove his innocence. Uh, I think it's way more interesting, uh, especially for the Yotsuba arc up next, if Light had his memories, but it's, it's 40 minutes of television and it feels like two hours. It's really boring. It's, it's really bloated. I don't like it. Uh, then we got Yotsuba, which I think is a yellow, uh, Yotsuba arc. 
uh, is one of those arcs that like starts really fucking slow. Like the like the first three or four episodes of Yotsuba is just not good. Uh, and then the last three episodes or so are really good. You get Higuchi's like fall into madness. That the the uh, the the what they pull on him when they have Matsuda on Sakura TV is really fun, and Higuchi like desperately trying to find his name to kill him, and then they finally get get him and like gets his memories back. It's all really good at the end, but the fucking setup to get there is so bad, and the L and light cat and mouse stuff with light not having his memories is just inherently not as interesting to me this is this this is the part of the show where i started falling off this is where i was like i wasn't as on board anymore but when light got his memories back it was really good and that leads us to the end of l arc which i think is really good episodes 23 24 through 25 this is l's death arc obviously the fallout of the yotsuba arc uh l dies here rem kills him this is the true, like, last good shit in Death Note. I mean, I guess uh, the last, uh, like, two episodes of Death Note in general are good, but Death Note has this weird thing where they will end arcs really good, but the fucking start is so bad. But yeah, the end of L arc, it's really good. Uh, L's death is amazing. Uh, there's not much more to be said about that. Then you got the Mellow arc, and this is another yellow. It's, like, completely just fine uh, or below average. Episode 26 is just like 15 minutes of recap, and then you get like 8 minutes of content, and then you get the time skip, uh, and the, this is Mel, uh, like Mello kidnapping Sayu and trying to get the Death Note, and he ends up getting it, uh, and then Soichiro dies, so there's like moments, there's like a lot of moments that happen here, it's just not interesting though, it's pretty boring, and honestly, a lot of the people that like uh, explain that Death Note falls off after episode 25 just hate on near and mellow for like not being developed characters but i actually like both near and mellow i just think that the writing is fucking boring and it's bad too like a lot of the shit makes no sense like mellow straight up nukes a building goes out on notice and only has like a burn scar on his face like there's just inherent writing issues with these with these arcs and then it leads us to the x cure arc which is fucking awful i hate this arc it's episodes 30 through 35 all of these episodes are oranges or reds. They're terrible. I hated watching this. Mika me, uh, like, couldn't like the death. Like, it's it's so luck based that fucking light gets Mika me to get the death note. Like the person who worships him, and then Near figures out that it's Mika me using the death note for literally no reason. I have no idea how Near figures it out. He just sees Mika me on the TV and he's like, "All right, that's the guy." And it's like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 what? How the fuck did you figure that out?" It's like. Everything plays out so perfectly for both Light and Near that it, it's, it feels unearned. Like, Light getting the Death Note to Mikami, it's like, wow, that's pretty convenient. And then Near figuring out Mikami has the Death Note, it's fucking convenient as shit too. The end of Kira arc is really good, but like the X Kira arc is so ass. And then you got the end of Kira arc, which is really good. Like, it's honestly astonishing that it can go from a red to a blue. It's impressive how good the last two episodes of Death Note are, despite having like seven episodes of straight ass setup but yeah light's end of his arc getting outsmarted by near it's really good he has a perfect ending to his character he dies on the steps of course signalizing that he won't go to heaven or hell there's a lot to like about the end of death note but death note ends strong those were my thoughts on the anime arcs that i have seen so far let me quickly rate them in tears so this was my complete tier list of the anime arcs I've seen so far. I will probably update this video next year, uh, so expect a lot more anime arcs by then. A Chainsaw Man review will be up next. I don't think I'm going to review Death Note, but I am going to make uh, a couple videos on it. Like I do want to talk about Overcast. It's one of the best episodes of anime I've ever seen. Uh, and I do want to talk about like its failures in the second half. But uh, yes, this was my video rating anime arcs. If you want to see more content like this, like and subscribe for more. Recommend some animes to me down below if you want to see me watch them. I'm taking suggestions right now. Thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful day.